Evening. <laughs> Lovely night for it. Oh, I wish I was at home in the in the warm looking at Facebook, don't you? <laughs> anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live from a beautiful, as you can see, rather wet Wembley. How are you doing, Stav? Good, thank you, Jake. Good. Good. You were just saying though, despite this, for, from a footballer's perspective, you mm. think, yeah, this is good, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was saying it's it's slightly heavy. Don't get me wrong. And if the pitch holds up. This type of weather, like when it used to train and when we used to like, obviously train and stuff, and it was this type of weather, it's when the tackles are flying in, the ball's obviously very slick on the surface, it moves quicker, and it's a goalkeeper's nightmare. So it's a kind of, you know, for someone like Harry Kane tonight or Ricardi for Inter, it'll be a shoot on site policy because it'll come flying off the surface. Love it. It feels like a big night, and we'll start talking about tonight specifically in a minute if we stay dry enough. But we put a poll out earlier on asking. Who is the best club in London? Obviously, Christian Eriksen joined us live on Premier League tonight on Saturday evening, and I said to him, are you the best club in London? And his answer was an emphatic, us. Best club yes. or team? Best club, best team. Sort of the same thing, really, at the moment. It's not, Who's... is it? Well, it is. No, Why? No, what do you mean? Best team is completely different from best club, surely. Best team would be the highest in the Premier League at the minute. All right, well, we? what we're talking... No, we're not talking about which best club over decades. We're oh. talking about, at the moment, who is the best... Oh. Who's the best in London? I would yeah? say it's, um, Spurs are the highest in the league. And okay. the Chapman's League. You just create an argument and then just agree anyway. Oh, but it's different. Best club or best team is different, isn't it? No, biggest club is different. Oh, best club. I would say I would say Arsenal probably the best club. Would you? Why? Well, 43 trophies over the number of years compared to Chelsea's 26, Spurs 24. Yeah, but that's, that's yeah. history, though, isn't The it? best team at the minute, I right would now, say, is Spurs. Yeah. Christian was asked the question, yeah. are you the best, best team in London right now? So if he was going to yeah. apply that to the best club in London, it'd be different. right now. Yeah. Well, right now, I would say... Best team, Spurs. Yeah, best best club. Spurs. You said Arsenal. Let's <laughs> just move on. I think Arsenal. <laughs> OK. That's fair enough. Though. Well, fair enough. should we give you the results? Uh, 31% Arsenal. 33% Tottenham. Chelsea with 36%. Our oh, best team now, currently. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what people are. I think, look, it's open to interpretation. Who's the best club in London? But I think you could say, well, Arsenal are the best club because they've won all those yeah. Premier Leagues. Or you could say Chelsea the best club because they've won the Premier League most recently. Or you could say that Spurs are the best club because they're currently the best of those three clubs in London. But you're saying... The best team currently is Spurs because they're in the Champions League and the highest place in the Premier League at the London team. So you have to say Spurs. I, didn't, I never thought this question would get so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk then about Tottenham. Um, beat Chelsea on Saturday. Mm. Fifth consecutive London derby win, which you could say makes them the best team or best club in London. Um, what do you think of them at the moment, though? They are, you know, just about hitting the mark that Maurizio, I think, um, would be expecting them to hit around this time of the year, really. I think um, if you look historically with Spurs, the way that, he, you know, he probably pushes them in training, um, they can start slow. I know it's been their best start to a Premier League season that they've had, but in terms of the performances, it hasn't been there. They've had to graft and grind out the results yeah. away from home, which has been a different side to them that we've not really seen. I think Saturday was the first time... I, you know, I felt like I got to see the Tottenham that I'm used to seeing. And it was no coincidence that, you know, when Son, Deli and Eriksen come back into the side, Harry Kane comes to life and you, you felt like, actually, these are the performances that, you know, that he's been expecting to see that, you know, in fairness to them, they've deserved on the basis of the, you know, the horrible ones they've had to dig out. And how do you both now reflect on the lack of summer business? And I'm interested, actually, to know how Maurizio will be feeling Will he be thinking we're doing amazingly considering or is he thinking, man, if only they'd let me bring in a couple of really big names and big hitters over the summer, we could be challenging City. Look, you, you can only think that that has to be in his mind, the fact that he, he wishes that he could have brought in at least yeah. one or two. Um, you can look at the league situation and go, how positive is that? That's great. You know what? We're sitting in like third position or whatever. You know, we've been... Um, playing reasonably well, better, better than I expected, I think it would be, be in his mind. But then you look at the Champions League situation and you think, well, it's desperate times. You know, you're looking at the game tonight, it's a must-win game, then you've got to go to Barcelona and win that game as well. Um, if he did have a little bit more strength and depth, you know, if I know the, the, the question is always, you know, who do you have to replace Harry Kane and so on? And, it, you know, it's one of those old arguments but the facts are there are a number of players that return from the World Cup either injured or out of form or slightly tired and it cost them I think in the early stages of the Champions League so in this competition definitely in the league he'll be delighted with you know with where they are. Let's talk bests in London again is he the best coach in London? Um, I would say Unai Emery because of what he's won with Sevilla wasn't it three back to backs Europa Leagues won the treble at PSG okay you know we it's He's, he's still won the trophies. 
limited what he's spent. I think Pochettino's doing a wonderful job, as Jermaine says, wonderful job. But, you know, are we saying the best coach? What, because he's getting the best out of players? You would say Una Emery's getting the best out of those Arsenal players. Also done it in Spain, didn't he, with Sevilla, mm. which is an incredible achievement. You know, listen, who am I to say? I've never done the job. But if I'm from the outside looking in, I think Poch has done an amazing job. So has Una Emery. But the... I'm just going against JJ because I've got to mm. make an argument. But weirdly enough, life. Pellegrini's the only one that's won the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even factored him in. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say, I mean, like, Sari and, and, and Maurizio, they actually fall into a similar bracket in terms of it's about style of play. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's attracted to it. Um, you know, you know, Emery's got things over the line. And I think maybe that's where... Maurizio is obviously trying to get to, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's definitely Maurizio Pochettino. It's the person, it's the manager that I would want to play for. And well, I we, think it's who would most players would want to play we for. We talk so much, don't we, about the Premier League attracting the best players in the world. When you look at the managers that are currently managing in the Premier League, what are you looking at? Leo said step Listen. back. How far, Leo, this far? <laughs> Leo's the <laughs> floor manager, if Leo. you're wondering. Leo, don't yeah, disturb yeah. us when we're talking yeah, about I, football. Yes, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what he just... Yeah, off you go. Thanks, Leo. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was. Talking about. <laughs> no, we were talking about managers yeah. and the, the, the brilliant array of managers and the different managerial styles. Not just in terms of the way they play football, but the, the way they manage players. We are so blessed at the moment to see all these different men at work in the Premier League. We are. I always felt that what what hit me uh, quite a lot was when you kind of saw Mourinho leave to go to Italy. Um, obviously, Pep wasn't here, and the, and the impact that he's had since returning. People like Conte coming into the league last year, obviously now left, and you kind of think, oh, I'd love to have Antonio Conte in the league now. Yeah. So the, the managers that we have got now, we are very blessed. But you know, let's be honest, Jake, they come here for a reason. You know, they come in here because they know that usually um, at the top clubs, the finances are great. They're going to be powerful in the market, and um, they're going to have top top players. And uh, it's an attractive job in the in, in the Premier League. Uh, you lot are getting into the whole best in London conversation. Josh on Facebook says, uh, Robbie, can Kane really be considered London's best striker when Aubameyang has scored more goals than him? Um, it's a good debate. I think I, if, but if there was a game tomorrow and you needed a goal and we could all stand here and pick a player... Yeah, who would you pick? I would pick Harry Kane. Um, there's an argument say, uh, we're talking to the best players in the Premier League strikers. Aguero, I would go as an argument, Aguero or Kane, but if you're talking about London... And there's a game tomorrow, and you had to pick a, a set of four out of a London club, Harry Kane all day. Like, if you needed a goal, Harry yep. Kane. I think Aubameyang's in better form than Harry Kane right now. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think he's the one player that Spurs will fear um, come the game on Sunday. Um, but obviously with Harry Kane, I, I personally don't think he's been anywhere near the heights that we know he can reach in terms of his performance. But you leave him on the pitch, and that one chance comes, and, and it's under pressure, and it really needs to hit the back of the net. You know, you'd bet heavily against the fact, uh, well, with the fact that he's going to put that ball in the back of the net. So, and, and you can't, you know, just completely disregard that. So, yes, he's not playing well, but he's it in the back of the net. OK, uh, let's talk about tonight specifically. Um, how do you approach this if you're Tottenham and you know you need to win? What's the plan? Well, I was at the game in the San Siro when Spurs dominated for large periods. They were the better side. They should have been more than one goal up. And then they just switched off, you know, into player moments. You know, they keep going. I think, you know, in Serie A, they've, they've scored the most goal in the last 15 minutes. And in, in San Siro, you know, they, the Cardi with a wonder strike and then they switched off from a set piece at the end. So, you know, they've just got to approach the game like they did. You know, they pressed into high. You know, they made... Um, they, um, um, sorry, I think into press Spurs. They both pressed, anyway. Yeah. Um, and it was, a, it was a... Spurs were so in control and they'd be so disappointed. They should be... They should have won that game. They should have beat PSV um, yeah. in Holland. They shouldn't be in this situation, Spurs. You know, it's a must-win game. I just think approach the game like they did at the weekend, as, as, as JJ said. High energy. You know, when you come yeah. against Italian sides, get in their faces, make life horrible. Like you said, it's wet here. Pass that ball around quick. And if they can get anywhere near the way they played against Chelsea, then I think they'll be fine. Do you think so? I really do, yeah. But, they're, playing very but it well. still might not be enough. I mean, that's the crazy thing. They've got to better that 2-1 yes, yeah, result. Yeah. Then they've got to go to Barca, try and get something out of that. I mean, they, their Champions League hopes are hanging by a thread. Do you still see them progressing? Oh, I can't be confident of saying yes, Jake. Not at all when you no. go to the new Camp and win a game of football. Um, yes, into uh, Barca have had some crazy results this, this year. But like, first and foremost, you've got to get through this tie. And Inter are playing very well. Spurs, I think, are in very good form as well. And I truly believe that they, they'll win this game. And I think the fact that the backs are right up against the wall and they know exactly what they need to go and do just puts you on the front foot immediately anyway. So I'm expecting them to get a result tonight. But to go through in the, in, in the competition, 
it's, it's, it's a long shot, I really Isn't believe it? it is. You know what? It's home. Oh, yeah, right. The rain has stopped. How nice is that? Oh, now we can do it all again without umbrellas, yeah? <laughs> uh, look, thanks for your company. Thanks very much for tuning in. Don't forget, we get going this evening on BT Sport 3, Tottenham against Inter. It's a game that Spurs... Thanks. It's a game that Spurs... <laughs> It's a game that Spurs have to win. That is an improvement. <laughs> Just leave it there. Um, and we'll see you tonight live on BT Sport. Take care. Thanks for tuning in.